The hang on back filter is one of the most popular filters when it comes to powered filtration. And there's a good reason why. Let's talk about why they're awesome. Hello everyone, this is Ben Lee. And last week we talked about why the hang on back filter isn't always perfect. And today it's time for the opposite side of the coin. And we're going to explain why the humble hang on back probably actually really good. One of the biggest complaints that most people have, and I actually left this out of my video on purpose because I wanted the comments to do it, power outages. And it depends on the hang on back filter, but a number of them, when a power outage occurs, don't necessarily reprime themselves. Now, thankfully, something like the title here, because of its skimmer, I know this is a modified one, but normally there's the skimmer here will prime itself because that water sits there and is right there by the pump. And as long as you're keeping your water levels relatively good, most of your aqua clears will also reprime themselves unless they've lost power for a significant period of time and are angled in a way that pushes extra water out of the back of the box. But for the most part, as long as you're aligning them correctly, you know, they sit relatively flat, you don't have to worry about this. Some are more notorious than others for having problems. But here's the thing. When we deal with powered filtration, we're inherently like taking water out of the tank, right? And there's both a good and a bad to this. The good is we're adding water volume. While it's not a lot, there's extra water that is in our system between our filtration and our aquarium. And when it comes to small aquariums especially, that extra bit of water can make a huge difference. If you think about something like this, right, holding mm, probably about half a gallon of water inside of it, if you have a filter holding that much, you're talking about a significant increase, you know, and, and you might be like, well, on a 10 gallon tank, that's only like 5%. But 5% can be a lot when we're talking those very low gallonages. So something like a smaller filter that's smaller than this, but on like a five or 10 gallon, that's still a pretty big increase in the grand scheme of things of the total amount of water and more water volume means more stability. So one of the things that actually makes powered filtration like this, our humble hang on back really good, it just makes your system slightly more stable. The biggest pro probably that we really need to look at is detritus cleanup, mechanical filtration. As long as we're arming one of these with sponge, that extra flow that comes from power is so much more effective at getting detritus out of your tank and kind of localizing it into our, our box here that it helps keep your overall aquarium cleaner. You don't necessarily have to worry about gravel vacuuming or doing extra maintenance like you would with an air-driven filter like a sponge. There's just significantly more power in the amount of flow that's moving through your tank that it can move those particulates far more efficiently. And also, because of the way that these are designed, right, you've got water that's going to come along the top of your tank, it's going to hit a wall, it's going to cycle down, and then usually you've got an intake tube down low so that as that detritus and all that muck is moving, your intake is down low where it sits, whereas with most of our sponge filters, everything's kind of in this middle section of the tank. And so trying to actually force that detritus upward under just air power it's not going to bring up nearly as much that would be down on the substrate layer as it will get some things out of the water column where the power filters, especially your hang on backs, this is what they're really good at. They have significantly more water volume flow, right? They're just moving so much more water because of the powered pumps that sit inside of these things, way more powerful than some humble air driven filter, right? So that allows you to get much cleaner water and because we have so much space, I mean, just look in something like this, right? And this has got sponge and stuff in it, but because we have so much more space in the back of these canisters, we can configure them way more than we could configure something like a sponge. You've got room for physical media. If you want to use something like a ceramic ring or your bio home ultimates, pick whatever crazy media you want for biological media. You have way more room for mechanical filtration and different variances of it. You want to use filter floss, you want to use fine padding, you want to use just several coarse sponges, whatever that may be, you have much more room to fit those things in. 
so you can get much higher levels of water polishing and get that like beautiful clear water in your tank that you're searching for. Air driven filters, they can't do that. It's very frequently that our air-driven filters actually leave a good number of particulates up in the water column. Is it bad? No, they're usually small, but still there is a definitive difference between a hang-on back and an air-driven filter when it comes to water clarity. Water clarity, hang-on backs have that in spades. The next major benefit ties into that, flexibility, right? There's lots of room for you to do whatever you want with your hang-on back, and because of the design of a hang-on back, compared to a canister filter, they're so easy to service. The amount of time it takes you to service a sponge filter typically is about the same time it takes to service one of these, and the only difference is you have significantly more room for media, whether that is just sponges or whether that is some other biological media or chemical media, if you want to go carbon and, and some of those routes, right? You have so much more room for all these medias and you can configure them how you want. You could have a little bit of sponge, a little bit of <laughs> like ceramic rings, and then a little bit of carbon over the top if you wanted all three things. Or Purigen for those of you who uh, you know, are on the aquascaping level but you still use a type of carbon. You just have so much more room to configure your filtration and really optimize the kind of oomph, if you will, the, the mix of mechanical, biological, and chemical potential inside a hang-on back is so much higher than almost anything else when you also factor in the speed and ease of maintenance because you can maintenance this thing so quickly and with all this extra room you probably only need to maintenance this about once a month like you would a sponge and because it only takes you 10 15 minutes tops it's quick with huge upsides and the next thing we definitely need to talk about price i know sponge filters are cheap here's the good news very frequently, you can find all sorts of coupons for your big box stores to make something like this, the Aqua Clear, the Top Fin, whichever one you are interested in, the, the Penguin, whatever, right? There's lots of good ones. Or there are regular sales to where these become extremely cheap, especially for the amount of volume and power you are getting. They actually can get to a point of where they practically rival what it would cost you to put one or two sponge filters into an aquarium, but for significantly more capability and flexibility in the way you configure them. If you're getting something like an AquaClear 50, and I have seen, I have seen recently, somebody show me a receipt of an, a brand new AquaClear 50 for about $27 at a big box store because of the right sales and discount codes. And if you cut timing during the holiday season, there's almost always really good sales through some of the websites out there to where you can get extremely good deals on some of these filters. So if you're a little patient, you can get these dirt cheap and get yourself a really good filter that's gonna last a long time and is way, way more effective when it comes to water polishing and media capacity than anything that's gonna be air driven. And comparatively, again, on that cost, you're not paying the two or three hundred dollars that it costs to get a canister filter. When realistically, one or two of these will do just as much as any given canister filter for like a fraction of the cost. I mean, a great example, right? The Fluval 407. It's a good canister filter. But if you were to get yourself an AquaClear 110, you have pretty close to about the same capacity in the grand scheme of things and water movement as you do in that canister, if you want to think about it, but for a fraction of the cost. And especially if you can get them on a good deal, uh, I've seen something where like the, the Marineland penguins go on sale in the holidays or like almost nothing to where you could get two of the penguins and have as much filtration capacity and media capacity as you would for like an entire 407, but now you're able to like split your inputs and keep your water even more polished and clean, right? Instead of a single thing, you can now alternate your services that help speed up your maintenance. Like, yeah, you're doing a little more frequently, but there's so many ways that you can end up saving tons of money to get these way cheap compared to your larger canister filters but still get all the benefit of that powered filtration, which is that higher flow rate, 
way more customization and configuration in the type of media you use, way better water polishing than any air driven filter could ever hope to be. And the next thing that makes these really important, yes, it is a big box. And even the worst defenders, like the title here, where you've got this big thing that sits in your tank, still they're typically all black. So if you have a dark background, they're easy to hide. Which means that unlike some of your sponge filters and some of those things, these can blend into the background really, really well and make it so that you really don't notice them very well if you arrange your plants or just your, your hardscape, whatever it may be, your decorations, in a way that makes these minimally intrusive. So for those of you who are aquascapers, and maybe you don't want to spend, you want to go a little more budget, you want to go a little easier, and you don't want to spend the money on a big expensive canister, hang them back to your best friend. You can make them relatively hidden in a tank. It just takes a touch of planning, and you get all that benefit of power filtration, right? Those good flow rates, great water polishing, so you can get this like beautiful clear water like I have here. This is on a canister filter, but you know what? You can get the exact same thing on a hang on the back you can get just as much water clarity with a hang on the back filter. You don't have to have a canister filter. This tank right here, hang on the back. This is an AquaClear 110 on a 40 breeder. I bought one used. I will buy a used hang on the back way more often than I would ever consider a used canister. I'm way more leery of purchasing used canisters than I am hang on the backs because hang on the backs almost always are easy to debug the problem if there is one, or just in general tend to last longer. Plus, their replacement parts are way cheaper than looking at something like a, a, a big canister filter. Big example, I bought FX6s used in the past. You guys know I love the FX6. The pump on that thing is not cheap. But I've bought used aqua clears, and the most I've ever had to do is like replace an impeller. Because that raw motor that sits in them that thing lasts forever. It's hard to kill that motor. Sometimes you lose the impeller, right? We talked about that in the previous video, but you can replace them easily and they're not very expensive in the grand scheme of things. The impeller, especially if you're getting something like, I've seen, again, AquaClear 110s for like $20, sometimes even free. And all it's like, oh, it doesn't work anymore. And you'll find out, oh, it's just the impeller needs to be cleaned or replaced. And that part's relatively cheap. And now you're getting a, a wonderful functional filter for pennies compared to what it costs to buy a big canister or even some of your like fancier hang on backs brand new. Final point that I really want to talk about when it comes to the hang on back filter. These are very beginner friendly. Servicing a canister filter and, and sometimes trying to figure out why your canister filter doesn't fire back up correctly after you do service it is not the most beginner friendly thing known to man. So if you have a friend, a family member, whatever it may be, who wants to get an aquarium and they don't want the noise of a sponge filter or they don't like the way a sponge filter looks, that's your answer. The hang on back. Because it's very easy to tell them, oh, here's all you have to do. You open it up, you pull out the tray, bing, bang, you clean it real fast. You know, you maybe you put it in a bucket, you walk it over to your sink, you do your cleaning, you bring it back in, you just slot it in. You power it back on, you're good to go. And in some cases, you can just pull the tray out while it's running and not worry about it. That can be a little messier. For those of us experienced, obviously, we just go, it's fine, <laughs> right? But if you're trying to keep it super clean, you just unplug the filter, pull it out, you go clean it out, you put it back in, you plug it back in, you're good to go. These are simple. They're easy. And that is the big benefit. If you ever need someone who needs something a little more simple as they're learning and getting used to the hobby, this bad boy probably should be your go-to. And not necessarily the title. I know this is just my prop of choice right now, but any given hang on back. Uh, I like the title. I want to be clear because I think maintenance the, the title is actually probably the easiest of all the filters to maintenance when it comes to hang on backs. But any given hang on back, very easy to service, fast to service. Good power, good water clarity, lots of configuration options when it comes to adding our own media, extra sponge, whatever that may be. You have lots of options because this part that hangs off the back of the tank gives you a lot of extra room. That's it. That is why hang on the back filters are awesome. And honestly, because of that ease of use, that configuration, that customability, and often how frequently they go on sale, 
That's why you see them all over the place. That's why when you'll see people who like even big fish rooms like Master Breeder Dean, he still uses Aqua Clears. I'll still see him with hang on backs. Very rarely do you see a canister filter. Most of his tanks have air driven power, but you know what you also see? For the ones that need a little extra oomph, you'll see a hang on back filter every once in a while. That should say something. If even a breeder like that, or I've got several friends, a great example would be Tom from TM Aquatics, right? Tom, shout out to you, buddy. Love you to death. Great Pleco and, and Corydora breeder uses lots of hang on back filters because they give him the flow he needs for those catfishes and they're easy to service and their power cost to run compared to the bigger canisters, way cheap. These things use so much less power that they keep your build down. Really, really friendly to us Aquarists. So, now I leave it to you, my dear friends. What did I miss? What am I wrong about? Let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the little thumbs up, give it a like, tell the little YouTube algorithm like, hey man, this crazy guy on YouTube, he might be telling me some truth. Or maybe you don't like it. Well, you can hit thumbs down twice. I'll understand. For you new folks, maybe this is your first video, maybe you're just catching up on kind of my filtration series here, consider subscribing, ring the little notification bell, that way you don't miss any other videos in this series, and you get to see all you need to know about the pros and the cons, why filters suck, or why they're awesome. As always, thank you so much for watching, and stay awesome.